Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Get ready for a wonderful, action-packed episode of the Annie Oakley television show starring Gail Davis. You know, most of the TV shows of the time, all the westerns usually had a male star. This one gave the little cowgirls somebody to watch and look up to. And Annie never let them down. Here she comes. We'll see you after the show. hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. The Apache kid drew on me. But your old grandpa was too fast for him. Before you could say Doc Holiday, I slept leather and he dropped. Still spinning those tall tales, eh, Si? You tend to your own business, Ed. <laughs> Go on right and tag. Annie Oakley, Lofty, and me rounded up the rest of the gang and took them to the Who's Gal. We'll tell you more in my next letter. And uh, just sign that, your loving grandpa. How do you spell Who's Gal, Mr. Cunningham? J A I L. It's the same thing. Uh, you really figure that your grandson back east believes all that hogwash, Si? Why, of course he believes it. He thinks his grandpa's a hero. You see, the boy's an orphan. And I'm just telling him these things so he'll have something to be proud of. Uh, you understand, don't you, Tag? I, I think so, Mr. Crawford. But what if Tim finds out? Why, he can't find out. Anyway... It ain't my fault that I'm no gunfighter. It's circumstances that makes a hero out of a man. And what I told the boy could have happened. But wouldn't he be just as proud to know you were a prospector, digging for gold and things? I got more gold in my teeth than I ever took out of the ground. That's why I can't have the boy with me, where he belongs. If he was with you, he'd know you can't even handle a gun. What are you talking about? Let me have that gun of yours. Be careful now, Si. <laughs> Don't shoot your foot off. Yes, sir. All I need is a good gun in my hand. <laughs> and any outlaw would be scared so bad, he'd give up without a fight. It's just because I ain't never had a chance to prove it, that's all. Why, if I was facing down some sidewinder, I'd grab my gun and I... All right, don't move any of you. Do something. You drop that gun or you'll be a dead man, Pop. Well, what happened to all that big talk of yours? Why didn't you shoot? I'm sorry, Ed. I... I don't know what come over me. I, I just couldn't seem to move. You're yellow, that's all. A hero? Ha, that's a big one. What happened, Tag? Three outlaws robbed the telegraph office and rode out of town that way. I had a gun in my hand. Could have stopped them. The telegrapher's okay, Annie. Just banged up a little. Thanks, Ed. Come on, Lofty. We'll try and pick up their train. Had them right in my sights, I did. I gotta make up for it. I gotta do something. Hold on a minute. I'm going with you. Oh, 
Oh, you're going to do no such thing, Si. This is our job. But I got to show you. I got to prove it. I ain't afraid. We don't think you're afraid, Si. And taking foolish chances with other people's lives doesn't prove anything. Trail, honey. We'll split up here and meet at the camp. They split up here. Look, Lofty. with Mr. Crawford? Well, I don't know. Probably still worrying about not being here, I guess. You'll get over it, Annie. Why don't you try and cheer him up, Lawson? I'll take him inside and lock him up. All right. I'll do what I can. Don't let this thing get the best of you, Si. Nobody's going to blame you for not taking foolish chances. I'm just a worthless old man. Ah, it's nonsense. But take that grandson of yours. He's got plenty to be proud of having you for a grandfather. He won't be proud no longer. Well, this ought to make you happy, Si. Boys do in on this afternoon stage. You, you just get this? It must have been delayed. I never thought the boy's guardian would let him come. It's a big mistake. What do you mean? Now he's going to know. He's going to find out that his old grandpa is nothing but a liar. He will not never be the same after that. You'll get over it, son. Why, in a couple of days, you'll forget all about what you told him. Kids are like that. Not this one, deputy. You see, my grandson ain't never had much to be happy about. His folks died when he was a baby. Well, his life's been pretty dull. I can tell by his letters. And believing that his old grandpa was a big law man, about all that ever mattered to him, it's going to be a terrible blow when he finds out the truth. Won't be as bad as you think, Si. Now, look, you better get yourself spruced up. That boy will be in here in an hour or so. Putting on a clean face won't make me what I ain't off to. You can't wash off what's inside. Side. It's no use, Deputy. You go on about your business. In a little while, it'll all be over. I'll see you later, Sam. 
no use, Lofty. He's not going to tell us anything. Now you're getting smart, lady. Why don't you wise up, too, deputy? We'll get your pals anyway, wise guy. The state is coming in, Annie. Yes, I have to, don't I? Oh! Right now, I wish a bolt of lightning and strike me. To a fine young man. Oh, he takes after his grandfather, si. Uh, Tim, this is Lofty Craig. Hello, Hi. Tim. Hi. I'm Annie Oakley, and this is my little brother, Tag. Hello. I've heard lots about you. Grandpa told me about you in all his letters. Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean to tell you, Tim. Uh, I guess you're going to be... Uh... Tim, Tag has an extra bed in his room, and if it's all right with your grandfather, we'd love to have you stay with us. Oh, thanks, Annie. Not much room out of the digging. That'll be swell. I'll bet you're awful proud to work for my grandpa, him being such a famous gunfighter and all. You're right, Tim. We're awful proud to work for Cy. Why, you know that your grandfather and Lofty and I have been through an awful lot together. I don't know what we'd have done without your grandfather, Tim. <laughs> now I've heard everything. <laughs> What's that man laughing about? Oh, uh, don't worry about him. Lay off, Cunningham. Why, this is the funniest. Uh, keep your mouth closed. Hey, what are you doing? Give Cy a break, will you, for the kid's sake? Why, that old Longhorn, he ain't even... Maybe I should have said please. Sure, Deputy. Seeing as you put it that way. Good. Spread a word around town. Make sure nobody else says anything. Do you understand? Sure. Golly, Deputy Craig. What was that all about? Is that man some kind of crook or something? Uh, no, not really, Tim. We just don't seem to see eye to eye about a couple things. I'll get your suitcase and take it over to the sheriff's office. Uh, uh, Tim, we'll get a bite to eat, and then I'll show you around the town a bit. Say, I just noticed. You aren't wearing any guns. No, well, uh, that's because... Tim, they're over at the office. You'll see them later on. Golly, Grandpa, I'm the lucky one. And maybe before I leave, I'll get to see you in action. Well, you never can tell, boy. Never can tell. That building there, that's the Diablo Bank. Isn't that where you had a gunfight with the Doyle gang? Yeah, that's right, Tim. And when the smoke cleared away, the last of the Doyles are laying right there on the street. Weren't you even scared a little bit, Grandpa? Well, man don't have much time to be afraid. It's either them or me. <laughs> well, that's about it, I guess. This town ain't much for size. But I reckon Diablo's about the best town in the world for a man to live in. I guess the people in Diablo think you're the bravest man alive. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, say, how'd you like to go out and see my diggings at the mining camp? That'd be great. All right, you just get on behind me here on the nerve and we'll be out there in no time at all, hardly. <laughs> yes, sir. Grandpa, like a cobbler. Oh, Minerva here is better than any old horse. <laughs> she won't break no speed record. But when the going gets tough, uh, I can count on her. Gosh, Grandpa, I didn't even know you were digging for gold, too. Oh, that's just a hobby, Tim. Just for relaxation when I'm all worn out from catching out. Are you real rich, Grandpa? You have lots of gold? Well, no, Tim. I ain't rich in the way you mean. But having you here with me and knowing I got a lot of good friends in town, why, them's the things that really count. And in that way, 
Well, I guess I'm just about the richest man alive. Now, you get on the steps there and climb up behind me and we'll get back into town. <clears throat> Saddle, he is just like his old grandpa. How am I doing, Grandpa? My first time, and I'm not even scared. You're mighty brave, boy. Keep it up. Hey! Maybe someday he'll be something I've always wanted to be—a real hero, not just a make-believe. All set, Lofty? Keep a close eye on things here, Si. Leave it to me, Deputy. How come you're not going with them, Grandpa? We'll need you, won't they? Oh, they can handle this job, boy. There's only two outlaws. Your Grandpa's gonna look after things here, Tim. That's mighty important. Somebody's gotta watch the prisoner. Yeah, I guess I didn't think of that. Well, you youngsters come on inside, and I'll tell you about the time that I tangled with Butch Cassidy and his wild bunch. I told you they'd be leaving town. Letting that rancher spot us work just like I thought. We'll never have a better chance to break Dave out of jail. somehow that the Cassidy Bunch was close by. And then that night, as I was laying by the campfire, I heard a voice. Don't move, any of you. You all right, Dave? Sure, except I'm sick of hearing this old man's story. Hey, I guess you never heard about Clyde Cross. Shut up! Grandpa, are you gonna let him talk to you like that? Well, I, uh... Do something, Grandpa. There ain't much you can do, Sonny, unless he wants a hole in his head. I'm not afraid of you, mister. Ow! <clears throat> hey, you can't hit that boy that oh, way. shut up. Are you all right, boy? Sure. Sure, I'm okay. We're heading south. I'll ride out and get Annie Lofty. How come you didn't stop him, Grandpa? You were standing right next to your gun. Well, I'm sorry, Tim. I, uh... You didn't even try. Well, well, they was all armed. There wasn't much I could do. You weren't afraid, were you? Well, of course not. It's, uh, just that I, um, well, I had you youngsters to think about. Uh, taking foolish chances with other people's lives don't prove nothing. I guess not. Well, you see, if it was just me that was in danger, that's one thing. But you and Tag, that's another. Then you better get after those outlaws. You can capture them, can't you? Oh, well, oh, sure I can. I'll get your gun. Now, wait a minute, Tim. I... But those fellows will get away, Grandpa. You've got to get after them right away. Yeah, I guess you're right. Boy, oh, boy. I've been wanting to see how you look with your gun on. <laughs> Go get them, Grandpa. Just like you got all those other outlaws you wrote me about. Your turn tootin' I'll get them. <laughs> Ain't no sidewinder gonna put anything over on Cy Crawford. <laughs> Unhitch Minerva, boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good luck, Grandpa. 
no luck any. Want to try the Rimrock area? Oh, I might as well. Wrong, Dag. Those two gunmen broke their pal out of jail. Was anyone hurt? No, they pushed Mr. Cropper around a little, but he wasn't hurt. Only his feelings. What do you mean? Well, gosh, Tim was there, and he expected his grandpa to stop the jailbreak. You know, like they talked about doing in some of his letters. Looks like Sai's talk finally caught up with him, eh? Sure does, Lofty. I'm just afraid he might be darn fool enough to try and make it come true. <laughs> Where's your grandfather? He got on Minerva and rode after those outlaws. He's going to capture them all, single-handed. Oh, no. Minerva's track shouldn't be too hard to follow, Annie. Maybe we can catch Cy before he runs into trouble. There are only three bandits. You think Grandpa will need help? He might. He just might. Hey, Tad, let's go out after them. I don't think we'd better, Tim. Annie wouldn't like it. Oh, she won't mind. I want to see my grandpa in action. You better stay here. You can, but I'm going out there. I may never have this chance again. Okay, if I take Pixie? Never mind. I'll go along. But don't say I didn't warn you. Ooh. We need supplies. Let's see what's in that shack. Come on, hurry up. Why do no good sidewinders? On top of everything else, they're stealing my grub. Hurry up, amount up, let's get out of here. Nobody ain't going nowhere. Just stay right there. Yeah. Now just drop them shooting irons and nobody will get hurt. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Captured by the great Cy Crawford himself. You better watch out, old man. That gun might go off. You bet your sweet life it might. You just climb down off of that cayuse. Sure, Pop, sure. <laughs> pinned down. Holy cow! Why doesn't he do something? Come on, Grandpa! Go get him! I Crawford, you're a good-for-nothing old man. You talked yourself right into having to commit suicide. Let's get out of here. Let's get over there. Maybe you, Mavericks, will learn your lesson someday. 
Looks like Ty's got things all wrapped up here. He sure has, Lofty. You should have seen him, Lofty. Drop that saw with one shot. That's right. He did. You really showed him, Grandpa. Oh, there wasn't nothing to it. <laughs> hey, you two mount up. We got a nice, cozy cell waiting for you and the Who's girl. Am I getting a mite too old for these shenanigans? I'm hanging up my gun for good. I'm gonna leave the peacemaking to younger folks, like you, Annie, and Lofty. Well, after what you've been through, Si, you deserve a good rest, but we're sure gonna miss your help. Boy, oh boy. Just wait till I tell the fellows back east. Just wait. Now, wait a minute. Don't you start telling any tall tales. That can get a man into a heap of trouble. Oh, yes, sir. You just stick to the plain and simple truth. Like I'm going to do from this minute on, so help me. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this action-packed classic Western TV show, Annie Oakley, starring Gail Davis. And remember, it's brought to you here free by westernsontheweb.com, your home for hundreds of Western movies, Western TV shows, and original Western webcast episode. And we do our best to keep it all family friendly. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Get ready for a wonderful, action-packed episode of the Annie Oakley television show starring Gail Davis. You know, most of the TV shows of the time, all the westerns usually had a male star. This one gave the little cowgirls somebody to watch and look up to. And Annie never let them down. Here she comes. We'll see you after the show. question of friendship, Lee Wong. Tag is supposed to be at home right now doing the chores. He's being punished for staying out late last night. Now go on home, Tag. Yes, ma'am. What's between you two, anyhow? Uh, like I say, Tag and Lee Wong, good friend. Talk about many things. You especially she couldn't come out real good, Miss Annie. Uh -huh. That will be two bit and 12 cents, please. Have you uh, seen the Scanlon brothers lately? Uh, not since I throw flat iron at them. Uh, next time they come, uh, Lee Wong not be so gentle. See? Have kept Lee Wong family safe for many years. We'll continue to do same. Mm. It's beautiful, Lee Wong. A real work of art. But I wouldn't try using this on the Scanlon brothers if I were you, or anybody else for that matter. Lofty is a good peace officer. If you get in trouble, call him. Okay, Miss Annie, if you say so. <laughs> Goodbye, Leon. Goodbye. 
Good morning, Miss Oakley. Good morning, Mr. Rand. Is my laundry ready, Lee Wong? Uh, laundry ready, Mr. Rand. Did you starch the collars? Plain dish starch, Mr. Rand. Uh, four bit, three cents, please. Have you changed your mind about selling that property of yours at the corner of Main and Elm? No change of mind yet, Mr. Ran. Not even if I tell you I've got a customer that'll pay you as high as $2,000 for it? Not enough, Mr. Ran. This town grow fast. Lee won't keep land maybe two, three years more. Uh, property maybe bring him ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. Uh, Lee Wong will wait. Some people say a depression's coming on. Oh, no depression, Mr. Ran. No depression. Well, I hope you're right. was tied around the rock. <laughs> Lee Wong no savvy. You read him, please. We don't want Chinaman and Diablo. Go back to China where you belong. If you don't leave town, we'll run you out. Signed, property owners of Diablo. Too bad, Lee Wong. Money fix broken window, but money will not fix Lee Wong's broken feelings. broke the window? It's a lie. I didn't break it. You sure tore out in a hurry. If you didn't do it, why'd you run? Everybody knows me and my brother's been having trouble with that Chinaman. If I'd have been seen around there, I'd have gotten the blame for it, so I got out. You can leave now, Deputy. You heard his story. Fighting that gun in a peace officer won't help either one of you, Nick. What are you always picking on us for? We're not the only ones in town that hate Chinaman. Maybe not. But you Scanlon brothers are the only ones that have been showing it. Is there a law that says we got a likely one? No. But there is a law that says you can't go around roughing up people and destroying property. I never laid a finger on the Chinaman, and she never saw me throw no rock. Well, then what were you doing in town? You were supposed to be riding herd for old Lowry. He went in for tobacco and coffee. And there they are. You got a pretty weak case, Deputy. Maybe, until I find witnesses. You won't find any. I can believe that. You two plug uglies have got the whole town buffaloed, haven't you? We're lucky. We got lots of friends. Well, yeah, don't stretch your luck too far. Tom's gonna think he's behind this trouble. Night, Peg. Hi, Annie. Annie? Yes? What's the trouble Lee Wong's having? I wish I knew, Tag. I guess it's just somebody that doesn't like him. Why not? He's a nice fella, and smart, too. But you should see him at... Well, never mind. But I just can't figure out why somebody wouldn't like him. Well, 
There's some people, Tag, that have silly fears about other people that don't live exactly as they do. I don't know why they don't take the trouble to understand them. Oh, don't you worry about that now. You go to sleep. All right. Good night. Danny? Yes? Are you gonna punish me tomorrow? You sneaked out today. I don't see any reason why I ought to shorten it. Oh, Annie. Well, you go to sleep now. We'll see what happens tomorrow. All right. Good night. Good night, Tag. The Scanlon boys are in town getting drunk over at Rieger's Cafe. I'll check it before turning in. Oh, Lofty, don't do anything I wouldn't do. All right, Annie. Good night. Good night. Doggone it, Annie. You're getting prettier every day. Oh, go on. <laughs> Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. This is a free country and I'm no Chinaman. Drink your coffee and sober up, and stop talking about the China. Get him out of here fast before he makes trouble for all of us. What are you trying to do, get Rand Sordis and stop all that easy money? No, all I want is more of it. Keep your voice down. Come on, let's go. All right, Mom. Well, I ain't where you are. Don't start picking on him. All right, all right. Good night, everybody. And you too. Cup of coffee, Sam. This is how it's done. Now you try him, Tag. All right, Lee Wong. o'clock. I better get home. If Danny catches me out again tonight, the fanciest present in the world won't help me. Think we'll finish on time? When is Miss Annie's birthday? Day after tomorrow. Time is short, but Lee Wong will help. Miss Annie will get present on time. It sure has been swell of you to show me how to work the letter. <laughs> Pleasure is Lee Wong's. Better go now. All right. Good night, Lee Wong, Mrs. Lee Wong.
Lee Wong will take care of everything. It is not needed to make trouble for you and spoil birthday surprise for Miss Annie. Go home. All right, Lee Wong. You slug me? No, Lee Wong tried to help. You dirty skunk, I'm sorry. Help, 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 help. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you hitting me for? I done nothing. This Chinaman here. He murdered my brother. No, Mr. Deputy. Big Mr. Don't listen to the lion skunk. It's not a question of what I think, Lee Wong. Look at the facts. Nick Scanlon was killed with your dagger. I tell you, dagger stole from me yesterday. You don't believe? We believe you, Lee Wong, but the facts are working against you. Now listen. First, the dagger. Second, the murder happened at the end of the alley that runs behind your place. And third, your feud with the Scanlons is known all over town. Lee Wong only know he not guilty. Somebody put frame around him. Well, it certainly couldn't have been Clint. You can say what you want to about him, but I've never seen two brothers that were so close. Well, finally wake up, sleepyhead. Hey, Annie, what's Lee Wong doing in jail? Nick Scanlon was killed last night, Tag. Lee Wong is suspected. Suspected? Why, well, he didn't do it. What do you know about it? Gosh, Annie, please don't be sore at me. But I... I snuck out again last night. And when I was coming home, I saw it happen. You saw what happened, Tag? Well, I was at Lee Wong's house. When it got to be 11 o'clock, I left. I went out the back door and down the alley. And I saw this man standing at the end of the alley. Then these two other men came by, and he attacked them. But I didn't know he was killing them. One was killed. Well, after he knocked them both down, he ran down the alley past me. You see who it was? No, I was too dark. Well, what did you do then? Ran back to Lee Wong's. He took a look at him and told me to go home. So I know he didn't do it. Well, that kind of changes things, doesn't it? As far as we're concerned, it does. But you're ready to go to trial with his story, though. The prosecutor make it look like nothing more than a little boy's nightmare. But it wasn't a nightmare. It was the truth. Maybe so, Tag, but Lofty's right. And what were you doing at Lee Wong's house last night? I can't tell you, Annie. I just can't tell you. What difference does it make, Annie? At least now we have the facts. Good morning, folks. Just heard about my good friend Lee Wong. Come to do what I could to help. There's been some ugly talk going around. Lynch talk. Well, we'll have none of it in here, please. Oh, of course. The thought was of me. Uh, would you mind if I talked with the prisoner? If it's agreeable to him. My sympathies, Lee Wong. Looks rough, eh? What you need's a good lawyer, Lee Wong. Annie. One of them fire-eating, jewelry-swaying spellbinders from up at the Capitol. A local man, you won't have a chance. But a high-powered lawyer will get you off scot-free. Those kind of lawyers cost a lot of money, though. Do you have any cash on hand? Lee Wong, not guilty. Not lead lawyer. Oh, that's where you're making a grave mistake. Tell you what. As a friend, I could raise all the money you need. Just sign over that Main and Elm property as security. A lot of the townspeople aren't exactly friendly towards you, Wong. They may cause trouble. Lee Wong, not afraid. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. I can't do much for you. But if you change your mind, I'm always ready to help you. Bye, Deputy. Tag, I want you to be absolutely sure. This is a very serious accusation. What's a serious accusation? Tag thinks Rand is the murderer. It's just like I said. Cross my heart. When the man ran down the alley, he tore his coat on the nail, because I heard it rip. 
And now Mr. Rand's wearing a bandage on his wrist from where he hurt himself. All right. Suppose it was Rand. What's his motive? What can we prove in a kid's flimsy evidence? If you want proof, I can show you the nail. Well, after all, Lofty Tag does have a point. Let's take a look at that nail. What do you say? Sure, anything to help poor Lee Wong. All right, all right. I might as well go along. Don't worry, Lee Wong. We'll get you out, because I told him everything. Everything? Well, not everything. I'm not going to spoil Annie's surprise no matter how much punishment I have to take. All right, let's go, Tag. Looks like Fence working that mob up for trouble. You go with Tag, Annie. I'd better stay here in the office. Same piece of cloth, all right. There's no doubt about it. Stay where you are, I'll shoot. And just what is Miss Oakley, the sheriff's niece, doing with my coat? This is evidence against you, Mr. Rand, for the murder of Nick Scanlon. And who's going to believe that a torn coat makes me a murderer. There was a witness that saw you tear it and hurt your arm. Oh, I see. Naturally, you're not going to tell me who this so-called witness is. Naturally not. I don't believe there is a witness. You're taking a shot in the dark. Well, then that shot is going to bring the truth to light. You're not going anywhere without me, Mr. Oakley. They're moving on the sheriff's house to lynch the Chinaman. I thought you'd like to see it. Well, they're lynching the wrong man. This is the one they want. What's that? He killed your brother. Pay no attention to her, Clint. Better get back and give that mob some help. What makes you think he killed my brother? There was a witness that saw him, and this torn coat is the evidence. You're not going to believe a ridiculous story like that, Clint. Wait a minute. I'm just beginning to see things clear. We didn't make enough trouble for that Chinaman to make him sell out cheap. So you thought you'd make some real trouble for him by killing my brother. Nick was my friend. I liked him. Yeah, but you like Lee Wong's Main Street property more. <laughs> Get out that window. And remember, I've got a gun at your back. Wait, don't see Lofty. Wait, I gotta go see Lofty. Get out of here, boy. We got you surrounded, Lofty. Send the Chinaman out. Nobody else will get hurt. He's innocent. And even if he weren't, you're breaking the law by trying to take him. If you don't send him out, we're going to come in there and get him. You want him, you'll have to get me first. Two of you boys will get that log. We'll bust in the door. Thank you. 
Go and give him a hand. Clint's been shot by Rand. He said Rand killed his brother. Wong just sold the property that Rand was trying to take away from him. The railroad bought it for $22,000. Oh, Marky, that makes me so happy. Oh, which reminds me. Happy birthday, Annie. Well, oh, it is. Gee, I've been so busy, I forgot all about it. Oh, Todd. Where did you get this beautiful bridle? I bought the leather and made it myself. That is... Lee Wong helped me, you know, showing me and everything. That's where I was the nights I snuck out. Which reminds me. Oh, Annie, you're still gonna punish me? <sighs> After all the trouble you went through to make me this lovely gift. Tag, I think I'm the one that ought to ask for forgiveness. Oh, that's easy. You're forgiven. And I promise I'll never sneak out at nights again. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday for me, too, Annie. Oh, Lofty. Thank you for joining us for this action-packed classic Western TV show, Annie Oakley, starring Gail Davis. And remember, it's brought to you here free by westernsontheweb.com, your home for hundreds of Western movies, Western TV shows, and original Western webcast episode. And we do our best to keep it all family friendly. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail.